get a hold of them and basically give them what I know from up here. But I need them to broadcast. And I need them to tell, like, you know, we are, uh, you know, basically ready to fight. Um, throw out some codes as I speak so that, um, uh, who's my sidekick? Lala, uh, right? Yeah, so that she can uh, basically start mobilizing. Um, so, you know, they'll, you know, some kind of code, like, you know, the take the babies out of the oven or, you know, something, you know, some kind of like code that we have, uh, uh, to get going. But what I want to say to all the AVIX watching, anyone watching is that the empire is not, um, you know, the AVIX empire is not one person. It is a collective whole. We are the arms, the legs, you know, the back and the head. And if one of them breaks, the entirety uh, of the body suffers. Currently, um, the ABIX uh, hierarchy holds a gun to its own head. And as soon as they pull the trigger, they will destroy the empire and uh, send us into a civil war. We're ready to die. Are you ready to die with your soft underbellies, uh, with your uh, casual racism and classism? You know, we are here to stay. Look down below you. We are the foundation of the AVIX people. And in this case, then I, I went off to another area. <laughs> well, actually, I think that you might be a little surprised. Uh, you say get okay. access to the media. You're probably going to actually have to, like, headlock somebody and talk into their mic. Wow. Right? Um, is the way I see it. And right. believe me, every single device is psychic, technological, whatever it takes, is trained on you. You are surrounded right. by people who are like, my awesome. network's getting, my my channel's getting this. Well, <laughs> right? I will, mm -hmm. I'll lay it on thick. Right. Well, the, so the question is, how successful is this going to be? Because you are attempting yes. to hit Freetown hard with this message. And it is... People are looking for guidance, which is good. People are also frenziedly running around telling each other things, which is bad. Hebu, you're trying to organize things, correct? In a somewhat more trying to get, get uh, because it's you're in danger of fracturing apart. You're under physical attack. You know, the nobody really knew what to do upon getting into the tower. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, there's a lot that you you're going to have to manage. You've got Malik there who's yeah. willing, but she's also bloodthirsty and is perfectly happy to go off and kill a whole bunch of another free town faction because, well, because that would be cool. So, <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of where her thinking on these things stops. So how you want to manage that is important. Um, sure. So we've got policy hitting from the media barrage hitting from the lower mid tower, we've got organizational effort going on downstairs. If I'm correct, Renee, on that? Yeah. Okay. Tell me more about that. You know, let me know what, what activities you're up to, you know, and basically how am I making you wait? Because these large scale concerns are exactly what I want to know before little no kicksicle, worries. little kicksicle, you know, it's very right, little right now and trying in to in the middle not of. get into right. anybody's way. <laughs> completely fine. Right. Completely mm -hmm. fine. Excellent. I have to think. It's mm -hmm. okay. All right, Renee. Um, yeah, just trying to uh, reach out. Well, not reach out, but find, uh, like I said, some weapons, find a base where we could fortify and have a hub to work from and try to pull as many people into this hub <laughs> with us. Uh, 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 to, to fortify it, whoever, whatever allies that we have and put it, the word out, this is where we want to fortify, but I don't want to get it started first uh, by just, uh, again, finding some weapons, finding, uh, directing people to, you know, seal this door, seal the, you know, knowing how people move in and out of this place, uh, directing them to, uh, you know, we want. You're sort of going to, to use the just inside the tower as a base of operations if you can which would actually be pretty easy to defend, even if it is all like rubbly and stuff in some places now. Um, right. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, before the attack of the Talons of Light, 
cracks open, you know, your physical organization, right? I mean, that's the the problem all by themselves. They probably wouldn't be able to do it that easily, but it is this time that a reign of winged warriors, nowhere near as threatening looking as the security forces who were freaking scary, but mm-hmm. but definitely, you know, the Avix are not they may be colorful, they may be somewhat amusing in the fact that they live in giant bird cages and swing on little, you know, bird cage trapezes and stuff. <laughs> but on the other hand, they're not pushovers. They are a warrior race. And a bunch of them, just citizens, but very motivated ones, are descending in a shower of wings and weaponry to aid your enemies or your the, the people attacking the group. So yeah that's that's happening so um then jerry we know that you're broadcasting your primary you're saying to everybody yes your primary target is freetown the lower tower i presume is is a, a major port a major target yeah but i want everyone to hear it basically if I can't get like, you know, the upper echelons on board, at least get them into a panic that will allow us what we need to do. Well, it's kind of interesting. The upper echelons have just received other information that involves your name in some detail. So surprising by you talking right now, they may actually be at least some people up there are going to be able to cross reference what you're saying with what Kicks Call has reported. So they may actually be able to hear you better, right? Mm. Then, so instead of just like uh, my name underneath my face that says uh, Freetown Agitator. That's right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But well, no more in terms. I mean, but she she got a better view of you. She saw you and Hebu like actually communicating. She knows that you were attacked by the security forces that you didn't, you know, suddenly foment, you know, blowing Mm. up the gates. In fact, she even knows right. that you weren't even there. She knows that you had been taken by the security forces and escaped into the tower. You did not blow the gates. Stuff like that. So Beautiful. So, yeah, so that's a lot of important information to actually have in place as you're making this speech, at least among a lot. And remember, this was something that everybody has access to. Nizna Lotul is basically punching a button so that this floods databanks all over the tower. So that's that's not a small thing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It makes life I'll... a lot freaking easier for you. And what would be ridiculously difficult to do is now not as hard. Hold on, just saw awesome. something irritating just popped up on my screen. Go away. There. Okay, right. So it would be very difficult to do, but now is not as hard. All right. Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to uh, get the word out, trying to mobilize, you know, the people down below. And um, basically the common man, I want them to see, you know, what may happen. But, you know, and once that happens, then, yes, I am taking off trying to get someplace else else safe so that they don't get me again. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that might be a little (laughs) bit troublesome because you have no wings and you're in the middle of the tower. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you getting away from being highly public, making a big speech with hundreds and hundreds of media pointed at you, and then saying, "Oh, I just think I'm going to go flutter off into you know." Yeah. That, that's well, going to be I, awfully I, difficult. Let's deal with the let's deal with the uh, let's deal with the impact of this role first. Awesome. Um, before we okay. start trying something else. Okay. Well. Well, we'll do that. In just I'd a like to go ahead. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm just, I think this, this simultaneous rolling is working out pretty well for us tonight. So, <clears throat> so Renee, I just want to know if you are going to mount massive counterattack toward this, this, this threat, or you were focusing on setting up a stable center of operations, defensible and otherwise in the base of the tower. Yeah, pretty much doing that, trying to mm-hmm. stabilize, make a mm-hmm. you know a fortification for us to be safe and to have a base of operation, uh, you know, to kind of bring some sanity to just chaotic Excellent. fighting and 
if you succeed, then getting a full access to all this data from inside the tower, including Carnivix's speech, is mm -hmm. going to be very easy. So that's going to be a benefit of succeeding. On the other hand, I can very easily see that everybody will get much more excited about fighting the, uh, the rival faction and fuck everything up, right? So that's kind of what, of you're, what you're up against. <laughs> um, sort of the, the broad strokes of what's kind of, you know, the context of the role. Um, so with these things happening, neither of which is very, neither of which takes one minute to do each of this, each of the things, Kix Cole's stuff and sorry, Carnivix's stuff and Hebrew stuff. All these actually give a big window of time for whatever it is Kix Cole's going to try to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, or... I want to know what that. Oh, do well. That's a good question. Do you want to see what happens between those things first, or do you want to throw yourself into the middle of the, you know, of this, and then we find out what happens for everybody all at once? Um, Either way, I I can start a little bit, and okay. then we see how how it works uh, okay. out. Yeah. Because given that uh, given that Kixacol doesn't know the front end from the back end for, of a weapon. Mm -hmm. But is slightly concerned about uh, Nalox and, and Hebus acting. She is probably going to take the call, come back, overriding other mm -hmm. loyalties. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. So, yes, she would like to come back <laughs> up. And she probably knows the way on the outside of the spire to get there without too much uh, interference. But she may want uh, to have some security with her. So uh, my idea is she's going to look around for Tonka. Ah, okay. Um, to talk to him. Okay, uh, that is actually a pretty good, a pretty good idea. Because one of my bubbles here is the Freetown Police. So therefore, uh, what they're up to is to um, they they have basically thrown in um, the the attack by the security forces that caused a fair amount of terrifying destruction to them um, have led them to throw in, throw in with Kibu. So they wouldn't have followed Carnivix, they wouldn't have followed Nalek, but they will, but they are, they are actually moved by Hebu. Um, and so Tonka, therefore, is easily accessible, easily findable. Um, and in particular, would probably be among those mobilized most directly to deal with the Talents of Light. So you actually have to go into the thick of that conflict to find him and see if he can get you up the tower. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm not saying that's the, you know, you'll have to roll for every single step. That's just sort of the beginning of the activity that you would, you would enter into to do this as I see it. Um, but, uh, so I'm not changing anything about what you said. I'm just kind of giving us a little bit of context of, um, oh goodness. Well, all right. So uh, that's two dice each from me. Okay. For all of us? Mm -hmm. I've got one die left in my pool. I'm going to throw it in here. Okay. Let's see, dice. <laughs> ah, Renee. Excellent. Yay. Want me to roll now or later? Uh, Jerry, did you roll? Yeah, I got a donut. Uh oh, okay, reverse. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, oh man. Okay. <laughs> um, Helma, mm -hmm. you are uh, uh, 
I don't know if you succeeded or not. You should roll it. Uh, I didn't roll. Um, I didn't say what I would roll, right. and I didn't even say if I really want to get in there and pick them out of there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not saying it makes it any harder. It's just two dice to do it, and this was just yeah. a detail. So, um, just so you know what you're dealing with. I think she, she, I mean, given the fact that fighting is over, all over the place, she she's probably going to try to get to him anyway. He hopefully isn't in the thick of it, but mm -hmm. kind of uh, pointing his people into the right direction, so there may be a chance to That's get true. there. Absolutely, she's small and. Well, given everything you've said, um, you, well, okay, I've got the two dice for you, and what, mm -hmm. what uh, I'm going trait. to use. Um, that's a good question. Right now, the only objective is I have to get to him. I'm not talking to him immediately, or no. The objective for the role is actually to get up the tower the way you want it. To get yeah, up I think the you're tower focusing a little too much on Tonka in terms of tasks. That was, okay, that's so just a means to an end. I, I just yeah. wanted to know the scope. In yeah. that case, the uh, <laughs> let me see. Um, I take that one that's called Trust My Feelings and Act. That gives me one die, and then I got two from you, and then I get two from my pool. And there's a one already. All right. <laughs> okay, people, I'm going to be narrating for Jerry after. Now, I didn't say that Jerry's situation was potentially lethal, which I'm now regretting not saying. <laughs> you you can retcon it. I'm, I'm good with it. Cause, uh... Well, I'm not so sure. That's that the pool is fairly strict on this point. I really, really, really shouldn't retcon lethality. But it's uh, but I let's just say I have plans for you in a minute. But I want to know what's up with the other two narrations, um, and whether uh, Renee or Helma wants to say what happens. This may be our last Avix episode. This is kind of the time to close out certain things, I think. So, um, feel free to lay down the hammer on things you care about a lot based on what you've said. If gotcha. Do cool. mm -hmm. you have anything, Helma, that you want to throw I'm out there? I'm probably going to take the move. Okay. MOV, monologue of victory. MOV, yes. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and talk. Okay. Save. Ah. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, through the chaos, uh, oh, but yeah, I was using the trait, uh, uh, sees much, misses nothing, by the way, I don't know if I ah, stated right. that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of like a, a beautiful mind kind of thing for, for Hebu, you know, mm -hmm. going back to her military days as a commander of forces, just being able to look at everything and put things together, you know, looking at weaknesses, looking at strengths, uh, uh directing people and really fortifies uh, her position here with the forces, while also giving direction to, you know, you know, setting up a way to bring people in, to bring people like talking also, you know, and bringing Nalak Nala into this discussion as well, having her say, you know, and making sure that she is included with what I'm doing, uh, commanding together. Interesting, uh, right. To bring, uh -huh. yeah. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what she wants to happen is that people see that there is um, not just reckless chaos and, and, and rioting and just, you know, that there is someone coming together to deliver a message. I want that to be very clear in how we deliver this message. But we're, you know, but we're not weak and we're not chaotic. That there is structure here, there's communication happening, gathering the forces uh, that have come to aid us, you know, having them spread the word as well. Um, and almost kind of setting up a perimeter of, yeah, a defensive perimeter, not so much offensive. Right. To, to open up channels of communication right. and, and talking, hopefully. That's what she wants to do is kind of lay that foundation to 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 bring people together to, to talk about what's happening, which yeah. is very difficult. But that's what she was uh, uh, trying to accomplish here. Well, I think uh, your end of that has been very successful at this point because of this role. 
how am I, I think it makes most sense if I talk about what happens with Jerry's communication first, um, which is that since you didn't succeed, um, that your the, the message gets out, but is variously interpreted. So, and it is this point when the, when Hebu, your communications network that you're setting up, your media presentations that you're setting up, your defensible situation, um, instead of, you know, a strong response of recognition and understanding um, is going to basically be a splintering of a thousand factions across the tower in terms of interpreting what Karnovic said. Um, some of which will be very open to you, some of which will not. Unfortunately, that means that the lower tower with its industrial setup doesn't suddenly become your fiefdom, which it kind of would have. Instead, it becomes somewhere that you are squatting in as a powerful warlord. Right, you, That's as far as you get because the reciprocal response was Carnivix could not quite bring it off. Um, probably okay. because he got swarmed. Probably because Carnivix got swarmed and is now uh, probably, you know, punctured and pinioned and incarcerated, you know, and, and, and restrained and no talking your way out of this one this time, right? You are, <laughs> you are in the hands of the security forces who have shown up in a battalion and have taken you down and... Uh, have basically tried to smash. That's the thing. They've tried to destroy as much of the media output as they could. A lot of it got out, but variously, right? In different chunks and in different venues of communication. So basically you've been shut down um, and seized. Um, so, uh, That leaves us with some context for Helma. Um, suffice to say that, just so you know, Nizna Lotol's uh, organization and connections throughout all the systems of power have stopped Lexian Ka's uh, assault. I mean, their, their takeover. So they have lost. Um, so therefore, tell me, you know, how you get up there. Um, how do I get up there? Um, the idea is that I'm basically using the external structures. And which probably means I have to go by this uh, retainment facility where the accident happened, which isn't mm -hmm. going to be the funniest thing, but, well, I'm adapting. Mm -hmm. 